Hey everyone and welcome back to our Shadowlands class preview. Today it is a fun one. It is the DPS Warriors and really they're in an interesting situation, right? Of having, I would say, minor tweaks to the specs, but minor tweaks that certainly will be felt. But then, and this is the key thing, a wild amount of utility being added across the whole class. Seriously, like actually giving us some hybrid energy that could be pretty darn interesting when like it actually gets in the hands of the most skilled warriors and we really get to start to see those actual cool moments of people using this class to its maximum potential. So there's a lot of interesting stuff here. Of course, be sure to check out our other class videos. And uh, yeah, you know what? With that, let's just get stuck in. Warriors, like most other classes, are getting access to some nice class-wide spells. So on the offensive side, we've got Execute, Slam, and Whirlwind available to all specs. Then Spell Reflection, Shield Block, and Ignore Pain are class-wide as well, as is Shield Slam and Hamstring. Challenging Shout and Intervene are also back across the board as well. It really is quite a lot. And then, of course, there's an old favorite. The Anti-Paladin Shattering Throw is back, but it's a bit different this time. It still does remove invulnerabilities, but it also does up to six times the damage to Absorption Shields. That's about the same damage, actually, as three Execute, so it's quite a lot. It no longer reduces armor on an already vulnerable target, but this really does turn it into a very clear anti-shield button. So, paladins, priests, mages, and warlocks all will have a little bit more to be afraid of now. Then moving to the defensives, the return of ignore pain and spell reflection could also make the DPS warrior specs just feel a bit less squishy than they have as of late. For PvE, having a 20% magical DR on demand every 25 seconds, that's going to feel fantastic, and I mean, I don't think the power of spell reflect in PvP really needs to be explained. And remember, this is the old version of that spell that reflects one spell within five seconds, so it's, uh, you can maybe say easier to use, but a bit less powerful than the current PvP talent version, which just reflects all spells for three seconds, but for what it's worth, that PvP talent is actually still there. Then, to help further with the defensive side, you've got Ignore Pain. Now, it costs a ton of rage, so it will be a DPS loss to use, but I think that's quite fair. It gives smart warriors a way to spend their rage defensively, in line with what many other classes can do. Now, I don't I don't personally think the defensive ways to spend resources really has any downside design-wise. I think it's a really good, like it's a simple but meaningful decision to make, and it's one that now most classes do have access to, which I think is a good thing. Now at level 51 on alpha, it prevents about 20% of max HP as damage, but right, it does actually have a high cost to match that. 40 Rage for Arms and 80 Rage for Fury. Then back to the damage, well, Slam and Whirlwind being class-wide, I mean, it's kind of cool, but it's also kind of awkward. We'll focus on tanks in a later video, but it pretty much only matters to Prot, and even then, not all that much. They're just kind of out of place in the specs they're not designed for. Spending 20 Rage on Slam as a Fury Warrior will basically never make sense, unless Blizzard's plan changes, I guess those abilities just won't really fit that well. Uh, now, Shield Block and Shield Slam, they will feel the same most of the time, but like with the Ret Paladins, there's that nice sort of niche use case of swapping weapons, right? And then actually trying some off-tanking, even as a DPS Warrior spec. Is it likely you'll do that very often? No, definitely not, but the possibility is there. And if it even saves, say, one botched boss kill and creates a really cool moment for people, then I think it will actually be worth it. Though with those two in particular, there is a lack of consideration from Blizz that's kind of apparent. Shield Block costs 30 Rage on both Arms and Fury, unlike, you know, Ignore Pain, which had different costs for the two different specs. And, you know, the, it costing 30 Rage in both makes no sense because the generation rates of Rage are different in the two specs. And that does make it feel like these spells were just kind of thrown in for the sake of it, so a little bit more work is definitely needed there. Now, for other things, Hamstring also feels a little extra, to be honest, given how Piercing Howl is already there for both Arms and Fury, uh, but actually got changed. So Piercing Howl is now on a 30 second cooldown, it slows by 70%, and it's free! So basically, it and Hamstring do fill a different niche, right? You know, Hamstring, a reliable, persistent slow that can make all the difference in PvP. And then Howl, you know, a strong AoE slow that can be used to, say, kite mob packs. Maybe Warriors shouldn't have both at the same time, though? 
I don't know. Maybe that is just a bit too powerful, but certainly from a, you know, just a warrior player perspective. Yeah. Having a hamstring and, you know, having both is definitely quite welcome. Then challenging shout is also a great spell to have back as well. There's not much to say about it really just that, you know, having an AOE taunt is going to be useful and nice. So overall, right, lots of new situational toys for the warriors. And I think that even if the implementation there is a bit messy, these are good changes and I think they will be quite welcome. So with that covered, let's Let's move into the two specs. First up, Arms, the slower, more considered warrior. This spec has been mostly the same for a long time, right? Colossus Smash and Mortal Strike have been mainstays, but the devil is in the details, as the tactician changes going from Legion to BFA really proved. And that is, well, actually staying the same for Shadowlands, for better or for worse. The huge RNG of Legion's uh, version of that, uh, that was kind of fixed in BFA, which, I mean, sort of gutted what could make it exciting. I mean, it's weird. It's a change that was probably the right one, but it's been sort of tricky recovering from. Uh, but sadly then, yes, there are almost no baseline changes here for the Arms Warrior. Uh, Die by the Sword has been moved to a two-minute cooldown rather than a three-minute one, which is long overdue and quite nice. Then sweeping strikes, that now lasts three seconds longer but it's still in the GCD. So yes, it feels as bad as ever. Having huge damage buffs take a second or so. I mean, I think it feels really bad, but it does make sense by Blizzard's original logic for the GCD change. But I think for sweeping strikes, it just doesn't really change how bad it feels. And certainly, you know, if you're going to go for like, avatar and then go and do sweeping strikes that's just your character sitting there screaming not actually doing any attack for two gcds and i think that does feel really quite terrible to play moving on then while the core of arms hasn't really changed a few of the talents certainly have most notably cleave deadly cam and ravager so cleave rather than being on a cooldown now is a spell that activates whenever whirlwind hits three or more targets it costs some rage and it does a ton of damage Currently, I think a bit too much on Alpha, but personally, I'll say I like the rhythm of it, but it does just sort of turn AoE into a two-button rotation. Then Deadly Cam affects the next four rage-costing abilities rather than lasting for six seconds. Now, technically, that is a bit of a nerf, yes, but it does allow for free abilities like Overpower or Colossus Smash to not feel wasted during, um, you know, during its use. It also it will increase your rage cap by 30, so I guess there's a use case there of, you know, almost capping rage and then using Deadly Cam to uh, dump you know, a whole ton of executes on the target. So there's that. Then Ravager's big change is an interesting one. It now no longer replaces Bladestorm, and that does mean that Arms Warriors can now either pace out their AoE damage over a few packs by alternating using their cooldowns, or they could just dump Warbreaker, Ravager, and Bladestorm at once to utterly destroy a group, which does seem pretty satisfying. There are some minor changes too, like with Impending Victory healing 30% instead of 20%, and then Dreadnought adding the Seismic Wave trait to overpower. So that's what's going on there. And I think these changes are almost unanimously positive. I think the cleave changes may be a bit more up in the air, depending on whether you like that playstyle or not. But generally, I think these are good moves. Now that said, there is no sign of some favorite Azerite traits like Test of Might, uh, which did have some nice gameplay interactions. But ultimately though, ARMS is still ARMS. The spec is pretty mixed, I would say. While their abilities feel really good, being reliant on the very, very simple core of just Colossus Smash, Mortal Strike, and Overpower resets, that can feel a little bit bland sometimes. The talent changes also don't really do that much to solve that core issue. I just, yeah, I maybe actually think this could be doing with some additional mechanics to play with, or at least one or two more baseline abilities. There's just a little bit of conflict, I think, between the huge hard-hitting fantasy of their big attacks and then the focus on deep wounds for damage. It almost feels like a less designed version of a Fire Mage's Ignite. You know, it's just a passive damage after using abilities that you would be using anyway. I think that maybe redesigning this spec around deep wounds or a baseline rend could have, you know, some more in the way of, uh, like, gameplay interactions with other abilities. I mean, even the Colossus Smash windows don't really allow for that much min-maxing. Uh, maybe having a way to build up bleeds or stack Mortal Strike beyond just praying for resets would make sense. And, um, okay, this is going to sound a little bit odd, I'll be honest, but... 
I kind of feel like Arms Warriors could feel a bit more like League of Legends Darius. He basically stacks blades with his abilities and attacks, and then each stack up to five will increase the alt damage for really satisfying results. So maybe there's something the Blizzard could do there a little bit. There's also, I think, some more fundamental things of the fantasy, right? You know, the seasoned warrior, master of these huge sweeping attacks, then uses Bladestorm as a damage cooldown and Whirlwind as an AoE filler. And I think they don't really they don't really add up to the fantasy. I think Cleave instead of Whirlwind makes more sense fantasy-wise, and then Bladestorm, if anything, because you're just whirling about like a madman, that does feel like fury more than it does arms, I suppose. Yeah, I mean, like with many specs, I think this is perfectly serviceable as it stands, and I think the addition of a borrowed power system will make it feel quite engaging. However, rating this purely and how it stands now without any borrowed power, I'd say it's not bad. It actually does feel good, but it's rarely exciting. I think Ravager, uh, that change does help a little bit, and the utility tools will make it more engaging to do solo content, but I think people who have maybe had core design complaints with this spec, those complaints are still going to exist, and they mostly are things that could be addressed fairly easily. I guess for me, it's just that for being the slow, considered spec, there's not really that much consideration involved with ARMS. So, that's ARMS. With that covered, let's move on to Fury. Fury is a similar enough story. Its core does remain mostly intact. However, there are some downgrades that will be immediately noticeable to players. Enrage only gives 15% extra haste now, down from 25%, which will make moving to Shadowlands from BFA feel like slamming the brakes even harder than usual. Now, Recklessness, that now lasts for two seconds longer, which is nice, but it does remain in the GCD, which I think is unfortunate. Rampage costs 80 Rage, down from 85, and Bloodthirst's heal Healing is down from 5% to 3%. That, as well as losing the Azerite trait, Cold Steel Hot Blood, will make Fury sustain a bit weaker. Hopefully the impending victory buff and the addition of Ignore Pain and Spell Reflect will sort of help to even that out a little bit. Uh, fairly minor changes, I'd say, but they are ones that certainly will be felt. Uh, feeling slower during Enrage, I mean, that will make being out of Enrage feel a bit better by comparison, but it is a net loss to overall speed, which is one of the specs to defining features. Maybe providing more time in Enrage to compensate would make more sense there, since, you know, really low haste makes the Enrage window feel super tight. Okay, let's move on to the talents then. So with the baselining of Slam, Fervor of Battle has been added, a Wrecking Ball also makes a return from Legion, and there's a new ability, Onslaught. And the talents uh, lost in exchange for these are Endless Rage, Carnage, and Meat Cleaver. Now, those talents weren't very interesting, so I can't imagine that losing them is going to hurt gameplay massively, although Endless Rage was an old favorite from the Legion Legendary Helmet. It's not necessarily the most fun effect, but it certainly did result in a lot more time spent in Enrage. It's uh, pretty unanimously picked for sustained combat, so I guess, you know, removing that, and like, if that was a sort of just a baseline thing for balance, maybe that would make sense. So... Yeah, that's, that's maybe a little bit unfortunate for some players. Uh, Carnage was much the same then, like it was a passive increase that just gave the spec more enrage uptime. It's gone, but Rampage also costs five less baseline, so that's kind of a trade-off. Then Meat Cleaver, that was also a bit boring and weak as compared to Dragon Roar and Bladestorm, so it shouldn't be missed too much. Yeah, so that's what's going on there. Now, for the talents, Fervor of Battle isn't exciting, but as a filler talent, I guess it works fine. It kind of will likely be ignored. Then Wrecking Ball, that could feel nice if it procs at the right time, but it is just that. It's just a proc to react to. Not bad, but not great. Now, Onslaught, that is the talent that gives us a new button, and it basically deals a decent chunk of damage and generates rage, but is on a 12-second cooldown and is only usable during Enrage. So it's a bit awkward with a less hastened uh, enrage window actually having this be a thing in your rotation. I mean, pressing your Rampage, Dragon Roar, or uh, Wrecking Ball, Whirlwind, and Execute, that's already getting tight within Enrage, without you then also adding in Onslaught and maybe Siegebreaker. Uh, more buttons isn't always better if they just kind of push other ones out of use, so... Yeah, the resultant gameplay, once we get a bit more haste, will be interesting to check in with the, sort of those talent combinations. Anyway, moving over to the existing talents that have changed. Well, Fresh Meat no longer improves the healing of Bloodthirst, but it now does ensure that the first use of Bloodthirst on a target will enrage you. Now, what's interesting is the, the, like, the AoE sort of cleave passive from Whirlwind, you know, that's actually not going to mess with this, right? So you can actually guarantee an enrage on each target you're in combat with 
you know, by spreading those bloodthirsts, even after you've been doing things like whirlwinds to do AoE damage. So that's actually something that people will be able to play around quite well, actually. Then Frothing Berserker, that now gives 10% haste and 20% movement speed when hitting 100 rage. And I'm not really sure what this change is for because it, I mean, it just seems worse to me. Needing to actually cap your resources, I think that feels counterintuitive to players. I kind of understand the fantasy, but I think it feels unintuitive. I, like, yes, it will result in wasted rage and, uh, you know, on fury, right? As soon as you can use Rampage, that button lights up. So if you've tunneled it into this, then you'll have to ignore that shiny button and, uh, you know, wait until you at least, like, waste some rage by capping to get this effect. So it is a little bit strange. Anyway, then Massacre now also reduces the cooldown of Execute by 1.5 seconds. So really, this has had a lot of change, but it's still not a great tree, I would say. Like, with so much of it shuffled around, you've got some very clear improvements, like maybe Massacre and Fresh Meat properly competing. But it does raise a question, then, of what, like, purpose talents serve. If they're clear-cut decisions for, you know, specific encounters, or are they just different playstyles? That's always something that I think Blizzard struggles to grapple with, and really, I think anyone would struggle to grapple with when they're doing a talent system like this one. Anyway, like, you know, the combination of War Machine and Fresh Meat that being possible could make, like, questing as a Fury Warrior feel much better, you know, allowing you to constantly move real fast and have guaranteed enrages. That'll be pretty sweet. However, Sudden Death is probably going to be as dominant as ever, so that effect, I almost, you know what, this is another thing of, if it's going to be dominant, why do we not just baseline it or maybe move it somewhere where it doesn't block off other talents? So, yeah, that's kind of my thought there. Now, there are rows like Fervor and Onslaught that then I think don't really feel that good. Like, Fervor is a very simple choice, and the other two, they feel, you know, more like things that you'll have to do rather than fun things that you'll want to do. So, I think that's a bit of a weird row as well. I think overall, right, I think that Fury has got a real solid fantasy that most people enjoy, and a pace that most people enjoy. The core is simple, but staying in Enrage is, you know, it is really quite fun, and using those Enrage windows properly is also really fun, so I think it's got that really strong core to it as a design. Uh, some additions, again, in borrowed power with new expansion to make players have a little bit more to think about would be nice, and I think would leave this spec in a very, very solid place indeed. I think it is just a shame that the talent tree has got some maybe lackluster or misplaced feeling abilities. The only remaining complaint then to address, I'd say maybe, is that Raging Blow doesn't feel that impactful. Now, in fairness, I have actually felt this about Raging Blow for quite some time and did not really think it feels that great to use. So, you know, maybe it and Whirlwind, they just kind of feel like different uh, tiers of filler. Maybe it'll be nice if Raging Blow, like, had a shorter GCD, like Wild Strike, but unlike Wild Strike, actually felt good to use. So that maybe you were mashing it in Enrage and you were burning through your, your Rage Bar, maybe that would feel quite good. It's kind of hard to tell, really, but I just think something could be done to make it feel a bit more different and exciting. Oh, and then also, if Blizzard don't want to balance the spec around single-minded fury, uh, maybe at least they could offer the option to transmog one-handers, even if it is only for this spec. So, yes, there you go. That is the Fury Warrior in Shadowlands thus far. So to wrap this all up, all in all, right, this is really the same through line that we're getting across so many classes. Both specs have seen some pretty nice upgrades, though Fury kind of had to pay a little bit for some of its upgrades. Without the borrowed power, these are going to feel slower and weaker, but that's really the case for every single spec in the game. At their core, these are two pretty satisfying DPS specs, I would say. I think, though, that some minor changes could improve them, but I do think that, you know, I'd be pretty happy to play either of these a fair bit. So, I guess Hopefully, then, if we think about the realities of Shadowlands play at Endgame, hopefully the Soulbinds and the Legendaries will allow both Arms and Fury to just get back up to speed quickly, and that the nerf to sustain for Fury doesn't really make them feel too weak versus their contemporaries. So, there you go, that's what I think about the Warrior DPS spec so far. We will, of course, be covering Protection Warrior along with all the other tank specs in a future kind of roundup style video. So with that said, let me know what you think about these changes down below, I would love to hear, and uh, yeah, just thank you for thank you for watching, I really do want to know what the Warriors, uh, what the warriors think about this one and its changes, so please let me know. But uh, yeah, cheers, and and uh, with that, I'll see you next time.